Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and whenever you are. Welcome to another episode of Community Livestream. My name is Chuck Tomasi. I am the ServiceNow guy with the cool bow tie sporting the dark green today. It is Friday, June 15th, 2018. Thank you for joining me. It is another wonderful day. Apologies for not being on Thursday. You didn't miss a show. I wasn't here. The issue with that, just double do do a double check on the audio. Yep, working fine. The issue with that is I wasn't I wasn't all here. It was a health issue and uh, couldn't couldn't make it. So I thought time better spent recovering. So back to 100% today. Feeling the juice. Feeling a Friday. It is Friday. Let's get going. Before I do that, I want to make sure that I scoot down here to the corner, do my little shrinking mushroom act. No, does a mushroom make you bigger? Or the potion make you bigger? I can't remember. Anyway, if you are watching live on YouTube, let's uh, get you to give me a shout out on there. There are a few people that watch this on a regular basis. Thank you for joining me. Give you a shout out. I know that there's usually Carolyn out there. Jay is out there. Steve is out there. We'll we'll get the gang all together this morning and uh, say hi. Maybe Kevin will join us and some other regulars. Todd from Florida. We shall see. We shall see. It is a Friday and I suspect... Those of you who are e east of the Prime Meridian <laughs> are just finishing up the day and looking forward to a nice evening at home. So give me a chat in the YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. If you find something useful in this video, give it a like. That way other people know what was useful in here as well. If you subscribe to the channel, you get notifications when the show goes live. I know I started a few minutes early because I have to go to another meeting right at the top of the hour at 7 a.m. my time. I do this show Monday through Friday, or as many as I can, at 1 p.m. Uh, yeah, UTC. Sorry about that. So that is where we're headed with that. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Carolyn. See, I called him out. <laughs> Yes, feeling better today and happy about it. We also simulcast this on Twitch over at Twitch TV. You can see the URL there. If you're watching there, thank you for joining us. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you as well. So a couple of different ways you can consume this. Twitch keeps it around for a couple of weeks. YouTube keeps it around forever. I also include links to various other things that we talk about. Uh, we talked about the community that only leaves the developer portal. If you haven't been over to the developer portal at developer.servicenow.com, you are missing out on the rich abundance of documentation for our scripting APIs. You are missing out on learning material for free. You are missing out on the meetup information, which I will get to some of those in a little bit. You are just missing out. So head over to developer.servicenow.com, free personal developer instance running Kingston, Jakarta, or Istanbul, so you can try and play and experiment and destroy and then turn on plugins. It is just yours to do with as you wish. Try new integrations, work them out, do proof of concepts before you show your boss, before you put them in your dev environment, or before you say, hey, I think we really need to invest in orchestration or integration hub or performance analytics because here's what it can do for us. Here's a sample of what I've put together. Good stuff. Yes, London will soon be available later in Q3. We are, we are just buttoning down all of the uh, internal things for enablement and training and cross-promotion, getting all that London stuff ready for you to be announced soon, 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 soon. That's, <laughs> I don't even know if I could say a date if I knew a date. And because dates change, I probably wouldn't say it anyway. All right, uh, events. Let's put the titles away. Talk about any upcoming events that are coming up. You can find out more at the URL on the bottom, of course, at the events.html page right from servicenow.com. If you follow me on LinkedIn, I am constantly publishing events, news stories, insights, all kinds of stuff that uh, I get fed from our social media team. June 12th is obviously passed. June 19th, we've got the Enterprise Architect Forum in Calgary. That's coming up. I will not be there, unfortunately. Wish I could, but uh, one of my colleagues will be there. We've got webinars, we've got webinars, we got webinars. And there is one that I wanted to talk about really quickly. We have Tech Now episode 53 has been put to bed. We did Guided Tour Designer last week. I got that all published up on the community. The video is posted to YouTube. 
the links, the questions, the questions. Oh my gosh, that's what took the longest is answering all those questions. Many were duplicates, so I deduplicated as much as possible. Can't tell you how many times people asked, is guided tour design available in service portal? The answer today is no. The good news is yes in London. So looking forward to that. Had to, had to wait until I got an official answer whether it was available in London or not. That was part of the holdup. The other was just the other 300 questions. There were over 500 questions submitted. I uh, answered about 10% of them online while Dave was presenting. It was nuts. Keep them coming. I love it. I love it. And then as we look forward, July 10th is episode 54, where we will be talking about the scripting debugger. Looking forward to that one as well. Help you get your code done faster. I, I still see people putting GS print or GS info into their scripts and debugging it that way. That's the way we did it yesterday. Today, as of, what is it, Istanbul? I think it's been a, a, a while. It's, it's been a year and a half since we've had this script debugger. Istanbul, Jakarta, Kingston. And, and I don't feel like, personally, I'm not using it enough. So I will be presenting on that on July 10th. Look forward to seeing you there. I, will, I know this says register now. I will put the link in the show notes. In, in the uh, comments of the YouTube post. But if you want to find that yourself today, go to the community that you see behind me and just search for Tech Now episode list. And it will come up. Should be the first or second entry in there. There it is, Tech Now episode list right at the top. It is a blog, you can tell from the quote marks. And down, down, way down here, wait till the fin page finishes loading, grab my scroll bar. Down, 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 50, 36, 37, 42, 48, 50. Whoops, I got a typo in here. Can anyone say copy and paste error? There's the register link for save time and headaches with service now script debugger. You know, what do you say we fix that right now? Change that to a 54 that it actually belongs to avoid confusion and someone pedantic like me saying, hey, that should be a 54, right? And they are correct. Oops, it, is, it should be a 54. Let me grab that scroll bar. I know, watching Chuck edit. What fun. Let's just fix that because I am that pedantic guy. I am a nitpicker and I, and I will, this will bother me and then I'll forget about it. And then somebody will say something and I go, why didn't I just change it? It'll take all of 30 seconds. Okay, it took a little longer than 30 seconds, but now it's fixed. There's a register link on there. You can also register there. Again, I'll put the uh, link in the thing, the video, notes, comments, <laughs> YouTube. You know what I'm talking about. This is, this is the old uh, try to type one thing and say another. Doesn't work. <laughs> so I always hear me mumbling along. Okay. And, and you know, when you edit something, it pops back up to the top of the list. So nothing wrong with a lot of it. little visibility there. 23,000 views. <laughs> <laughs> and probably 22,000 of them are mine. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, if you did, I should have pointed this out while we were there. If you did want to take a look at the number 53 notes, I think I just moved my window around. Yep, I did. Episode 53 on Get a Guided Tour Designer is here. I click through to that. It opens up in a new window. I'm going to move that back to the top because that's where it belongs. We've got the video. Ta-da! Don't worry, that does play in a full screen. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I do want to show you that. It does go corner to corner. It's just that screenshot that I got was a little, little skimpy. And the first comment in there is the questions. You can see what the question was, who answered it, who, who asked it, all that good stuff. Uh, I tried to put these in some kind of formatting. It's, it, uh, I may change this over time, but it gives you a little clue of what's going on. A cool part about this is the questions, after we do the, the, the seminar, the webinar, after we do that, they're given to us in a spreadsheet. I import those into ServiceNow and then manage and answer them there. And I created a UI action to generate that HTML file. We should go through that sometime. What it takes to do a UI action to create a file as an attachment on that record. Then I can open up that HTML and just paste it in here. So ServiceNow is really 
managing the process. I have a tech now application. And part of that application that I want to do next is import the attendees. So I get this spreadsheet with about four or five tabs on it. One of them is the attendees. One of them is the questions. One of them is the survey results, which are all on one sheet. So question and question one with all its answers are at the top. And then a little further down is question two. And then one of the questions at the end is, uh, do you have any suggestions for future topics? And I want to bring that in. So what we're going to do, there's a point to this story. <laughs> what we're going to do at the Phoenix developer meetup is enhance this application with a couple of integrations. Bring in that spreadsheet, A, bring in the attendees and say, uh, are these going into the sys user table or are they going to some other table? Do I make an attendees table? Which has advantages and disadvantages. We're going to discuss design questions. This is a developer meetup. And these are the kinds of things that people do at these developer meetups. It's all around ServiceNow development. Mike Stockman, our organizer, bless his heart, asked me if I had a topic in mind. I said, well, I'm working on something. And this might the same kind of philosophy that I do for live coding happy hour. You got anything to work on? Like, yeah, I always have something to work on. So we're going to be doing integrations. Integration is a very fun topic. Yes, it's an integration from Excel, but it gets you a lot of other questions that you need to be asking yourself around design of how do you architect these things? Should it go in sys user? Do I need a type field to say this is a type of attendee? This is a type of employee. This is a type of presenter. What, what are we doing there? So that I could put a reference qualifier, maybe when we start saying who answered this question, maybe only presenters answer the question so you don't get this jumbo list of, of 10,000 people or more over time. If I got 1,300 attendees at the last Tech Now, then yeah, that list is just going to go crazy. How do I reconcile them? Is it by email address? Seems like they're easy way to do. Is the uh, should I should I create new users or or link them or how how what other data needs to be linked to this? Well, if somebody asked a question that that I show you here or showed you on the uh, other screen, should I hyperlink to not obviously in the HTML from the community, but should I? Should I create a reference field from the question asker to their sys user record if I choose to put it that way? Lots of things that go on in your mind when you design these applications and create new fields, right? That's what we want to talk through. And I have ideas, but they're not always the right ideas. Yeah, it's my application and whatever I do, Craig and I have to live with. Uh, FYI, if you haven't heard, Dave Slusher has stepped back. He is still part of ServiceNow, but he's not going to be part of TechNow going forward. It's always welcome to come back, but his workload just does not allow him to do that uh, in the foreseeable future. So you never know. We may stick with two. We may go to three. Still working that out. Craig and I are doing discussions. We're, we're considering going back to three. It has advantages. So anyway, back to the developer meetups. Go over to meetup.com at the URL you see there and learn more about those. You can have those discussions. You can get involved. You can bring your projects and say, this is what I'm working on, whether it's personal or for work or whatever you've got. Maybe you've just got curiosity. You go, hey, can ServiceNow help me do this? That's how I got started. That's, that was really the catalyst, a question just like that. I think I told you this story even a few days ago when we were loading up the Loaner Request app. One of my service desk agents asked a question and said, can ServiceNow help us manage our Loaner laptops? And I said, let's find out. And it was questions like that that got me involved and, and steered me in the direction to where I am today. So highly encourage it. They're a lot of fun, very educational, and do it. Just do it. You won't be sorry. Jay says, I might have to make a trip to Phoenix for that meetup. Well, that would be fun. There is a uh, Southwest flight that goes direct from Midway to Sky Harbor. Could be here in a couple hours. I don't have my water. I do have my water. Whew. Good thing. It's getting dry mouth already and we just got started. All right, as I mentioned, I do have to stop a few minutes before the top of the hour, but I won't be able to stop if I don't get started. So let's get started. Go to the unreplied stuff. Service portal approval, approval form layout change. I do two things in my job. I learn and I share. I am currently in a lot of learning mode this week. We are learning about London stuff. Uh, it's had five views. Let's take a look. 
can't always answer the service portal stuff, but I do like to take a look and see what is in there. And it came up. I'm not sure how I got here with extra tabs. How to change approval table form layout in service portal. Well, approval is a widget, right? If you go to service portal widgets and widget instances, is it using a list layout? Is he talking approval table form layout? Okay, that looks like a form layout. You would, my, my first inclination would be to clone the widget and make it your own and instantiate that. Let's see what we can find. Name has approval. I have super big font on this thing today. Approval info, approval record, approvals. That sounds like a table. Let's see the approval record. Now, in the widget, when I look at it this way, I've got my HTML. There's three, four basic blocks to any widget. There's the HTML, the CSS, the client script, and the server side script. So this would be my HTML. And if they wanted to change the form, they would, here's your short description, here's your price, here's your recurring price, there's your various variables with a filter. This is using AngularJS, so the ng repeat with the pipe in here does a filter. To do that, my recommendation, my recommendation is to clone the Autobox widget, make it, your own, your own, own, ooh, we're off to a good start today, with customizations per your requirements and place that on the required pages. How about desired pages? That way I don't have required in there twice. We post that, ding. More details available upon request. Allow six to eight weeks for delivery. In a data table portal widget, is there a way to reset breadcrumbs upon a new search term instead of building on previous terms? Let's find out. Hopefully there's a screenshot because I'm getting mixed signals from this. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, here's the server script currently applied to the widget. Interesting. Wow, they're pretty thorough. They included this. If data fields, if data fields, I'm looking for the if input. Data keywords. If data keywords is not empty. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh. I don't know what that came from. I got a good night's rest. I don't know if you do that too. You get a good night's rest and you're still tired. I'm trying to change the script of my data table widget to remove the breadcrumbs when a new search term is entered instead of building on the last search term. I'm not an avid coder scripter. I'm a wee beginner. <laughs> so I was hoping for some guidance on how I could approach this. Hmm. Data title, data options. It's going to be, if, if they didn't get an input, then return. That's kind of what I was looking for. And your keyword search term is going to be in data keywords. So I look through here. Data keywords, data keywords, data keywords is down here. Data keywords is nothing. Uh, but if you, <coughs> if you don't, have the, what this says is if it's not set, okay, use data keywords if it is set. If it's not, then use SP get value keywords. So it's possibly sending across in or is it or is it adding it on data parse int breadcrumbs get property I'm looking for more keywords in here uh keywords 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 gr add query one two three text query three two one i'm not sure what that's all about otherwise data keywords equals null I'd have to experiment with this to find out exactly where they're going. It's not jumping out at me of, of how they're managing data keywords. That's where it's being, wow, this is a lot of server script. 
Uh, breadcrumb widget params. Table, data table, query data dot filter. Aha. So data dot filter is where they're sticking the breadcrumbs. And then they're passing that object through this parameter get widget. Um, let's see. Let's see. The breadcrumbs widget is being built. You want the widget to be a representative of what the keyword search really is. So f in data dot fields array, where's get record elements data dot fields. That's not what we're after. We're after table dot filter. Where's data dot filter being set? Anybody? Anybody? Good morning, Shadi. Good morning, GTK Snow. I'm not data dot filter equals gr get encoded query. It's right there. You would have to. Oh man, you'd have to parse that apart because it knows how that list was put together. It to to pull out that part would be interesting. Wow. Okay. So they're just grabbing the old one and. Possibly tacking on the new one. Let's look for data dot filter there and there and there's, oh here we go. If data dot filter data dot filter ACLs do an SP add query string. Otherwise, get the encoded query. I mean, I, all I can do is offer that it's around data dot data dot filter so breadcrumbs are coming from data.filter anywhere that is oops anywhere that is mentioned is where it is being built from what i see on successive searches it's using gr.get encoded query which returns the existing filter eg active equals true up carriage short description equals something and then tax on the new stuff to get the old stuff out of keywords you would need to parse that apart. Uh, with a string replace method. Uh, could be messy. I don't know the details. Could be messy. How urgent is this? <laughs> and you're going to need to clone the widget and make it your own. Okay. Unreplied. Good morning, cooking fever. If it is morning where you are. Uh, GTK Snow says, can you look at this, please? But it doesn't allow you to paste links in there. If you paste the sys ID from the community post, I might be able to take a look at that. What happened to our uh, clicking this link? Go to unsolved. Service portal attachments, one reply. Urgent, how can I pass a value from one widget to another widget and refresh the widget multiple times without loading the screen? It's called events. You broadcast and you listen. Widget one, create a tree view for the location. Location table as parent-child relationship in database, so I am able to create the tree view. Pass the value from widget one to widget two and perform the action. Create child location, rename it. Widget two has options to perform in location table. I'm able to pass from widget one to widget two and able to perform the database action. Challenge, excuse me. Now, as per the requirement, I need to pass the value from widget two to widget one to reflect the new changes in widget two without refreshing the page. I cannot perform the 
page as user might add one more child location in the same parent. Once check the link below, pass data from one widget to another. Okay, well, he said he's able to pass it from widget one to widget two, but he needs to pass it back from two to one. It's it's all going to be in, um, you know what? This is one of those, can you share the code thing? The magic is going to happen when you use, it's called, Broadcast and what's the what's the listener do? I can't remember. And shoot, now I can't remember. Mm, Angular JS broadcast versus emit versus on. That's it. You do an on. Oops, those are my notes for later. Broadcast and on. With your, with your event names. AJ, you already have, it sounds like you already have a way to send info from widget one to widget two that uses an event name of mm, one, two, <laughs> two, for example. Widget one broadcasts and widget two emits. I'm gonna break that into two paragraphs so my question isn't lost in there. Not emits, reacts. You need to do the reverse with a new event, two, two, one, for example. This is an interesting concept that I, uh, I, I forgot where I use this now. Oh, I used it in a uh, personal app that I use for our podcast. Let me see if I can find that real quick. It is, I call it On This Day in History in, in our podcast, and it goes out to um, Wikipedia. And I use Service Portal for the interface. It makes it very, very easy to use on the mobile. Log into this instance real fast and show you the user interface and how it works. And I use the events to do a spinner. And, and also to tell when the thing is done. So I've got the on this day portal. Imagine this running in a mobile interface. It's a lot cuter. Not so spread out across three columns. Or I could just, I could take this and go like that, right? And collapse it a little bit. And then you can really imagine what it looks like on mobile. I can even make it bigger. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so here's my a bit of a peek at what the mobile interface looks like. Wow, that didn't collapse quite right, but I'm going to do the events for next week. I click the calendar. We do this show. We release it on Wednesday. See this spinner? That comes up and goes away. That is a widget in itself on the page, and it's told to show or not show based on an event, if I remember right. So I went out to Wikipedia, got the HTML, stripped all the stuff out of the HTML, parsed it up into records in ServiceNow and related lists of events and birthdays and whatnot. And I can see I have 45 events on here. If I click the events, then I can simply choose the ones I want to put in the show. And I usually pick things that are nerd related. So for a minute, I thought that said OAuth, which sounded kind of nerd related. Samuel Morse receives the patent for the telegraph. I click it and it has just changed the state of that record from no, I don't want this in the show to yes, I do want it in the show. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell installs the world's first commercial telephone service. That's a good one. Lizzie Borden is acquitted. Okay, it's not nerdy, but it is interesting to a lot of people. The Keel Canal crossing the base of the Jutland Peninsula. Da, 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 da. You, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not going to make you watch me do my podcast here. It's kind of meta. 
being on a live stream. But it is an interesting use case of I had a very inefficient process that needed help. Every week I was going to Wikipedia, copying all the text, bring it into a text editor, filter things out, then rearranging all the words that my host could read. And that was taking 35 to 40 minutes a week. It wasn't any fun anymore. So I decided I could do this with ServiceNow. It's going to help me do this. And what I get at the end, let me bring that back to the top. After I'm done with the events, I go through and do the same, same kind of thing for birthdays. I don't have anything on death. But if I go back to the beginning, I can see these things. This is what I get after I, I, I edit all the records and I said, this is what I want in the show. I hit this regen button and it creates text. That is actually, this is the 164th day of the year of the Gregorian calendar. There are 201 days remaining in very easy English sentences. It picks apart the, the person, the date, the event, whatever it is. And I have a number of patterns that I reassemble these in, in a random non-repeating order. That was an important part because I didn't want to say the same thing in the same format of a sentence three times in a row. It was on this date in 1866 that blah, 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 blah. It was on this date in 1893 that blah, 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 blah. It was on this date in 1903 that blah, blah. Like, um, that's not very original. So I have these different patterns like also today in 1891, 41 years ago today, it was on this date in 1966. Same basic data being reassembled in a different ways. And then... And then once it's done, I save it back to the record because I may touch it up a little bit. Sometimes you'll see uh, like this one, it will, it will come out as pioneer 10 colon. It was on the it, pioneer 10 becomes the first man-made object to leave the solar system. Well, if that, that pioneer 10 colon is going to make it into my final text, I clean it up. I save it back again, the floppy disk. Really? Who uses floppy disks anymore? We can't get a better save icon than floppy disk. And then finally, this one is what I use to publish it out to Google Calendar. We've got a Google Calendar for our podcast. People can subscribe to it and they would get a notification that says, hey, there's been a new event posted for June 20th, in this case, June 13th, that uh, has been put on the Technorama podcast calendar. So very, very easy to do. I can now do this in about 10 minutes instead of 40 minutes. That's a huge savings. Those are the kinds of stories. Those are the kind of use cases I like to tell our customers because you can uh, speed up your processes with ServiceNow, no matter how random they are. Granted, this is a use case for one person once a week. <laughs> it's, it's me and only me. If you want, at some point, I could go into the depths of what this app does and how it does it, but it really, really works pretty darn slick. And uh, the widgets, I'm going to bring that up in just a second. I can remember what it does. The widgets for presenting the, you know what, I'm going to skip over that, but widgets for presenting the, um, no, no, I'm not. I'm going to bring that up. So service portal, let's do it through the widget editor. That's the portal config. I believe that's the one. I'm going to make that big page again. Bring up the widget editor. And fortunately, I gave them all very nice names like... OTD, um, output, new page. I think it's new page. You do not have permission to view this widget. I'm in the wrong scope, but that's okay. Let's make sure if this is the right one. There we are. All right, it's in the client script. And if I scroll that up just a wee bit, nope. You can see in here, it does a root scope broadcast show spinner true. And my spinner is sitting there listening going, am I supposed to be displayed yet? Am I supposed to be displayed yet? Am I supposed, hey, there's an event. So you use root scope says it's like a global broadcast across all scopes. And in order to use root scope, of course, my client script has to include root scope. When you listen, let me go get my spinner widget, its client script is not listening on root scope. It's got its own scope. And it says, all right, by default, show spinner is false. But when I see this show spinner event, 
root scope on. I think that should say scope on. I think that I made a mistake there. Then I'm going to set my variable to true or whatever it says. Whatever that event turn is, says turn the, the, the event says turn the spinner on, turn the spinner off. That's about how it works. You can, you can communicate between these widgets very easily with the uh, broadcast and on methods. So a little bit about service portal and events. Very fun. I encourage you to play with those. Let's close that out and go back to, well, at least I think they're very fun. Happy Friday, Chad. Hope things are going well in Atlanta. So GTK, if, if you pull up, I'm going to use this one as, a, as an example. If you want me to take a look at something, go ahead and post the sysid into the chat. And it will say right at the end of the URL, I'll copy this entire one out so you can see it better. Bring up my text editor. Paste. That's what the community URL will look like. Give me this part in the chat. Sysid equals blah, 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 blah. And I will paste it and see if I can get there easily from, uh, from here. I'm going to leave that one up. Nah, I'm not. I cheated. Let's go back to unreplied, see what we can find. I'm doing this in a very haphazard, random way. While that's coming up, take a drink. Missing columns from incident when copied data from ServiceNow using Azure Data Factory. Sounds like an integration question. I'm not sure what it's doing in IT service management, but let's find out. Maybe because they thought it was incident. Remember, if you are posting a question in the community to put it in the right subforum. If you're asking an ITSM question and it's really about ITOM, you're not going to get the right audience. If you are posting a question, make sure you post one question per post so that we can answer them succinctly. If you say, hey, what's the best way to report on this? And uh, does anybody have any way to do a CMDB implementation? Those are very broad questions. Uh, and in some cases, that will never get answered because it, does anybody have any best practices about X? It's going to be tricky. The Azure Data Factory provides a built-in connector for ServiceNow that simplifies copy activity from the ServiceNow REST API. It works great and allows us to easily copy data to Azure SQL and other sources. More info from here. Cool. Didn't know that was out there. That's good to know. I'm going to take a look at that real quick. feel like a first-class citizen when we're mentioned in Microsoft. <laughs> copy data from ServiceNow using Azure Data Factory. The article outlines the copy activity, supported capabilities, getting started, linked service properties, type endpoint, da 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 da, -da. authentication type, Good, good example. JSON, name, ServiceNow links, properties, da, 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 endpoint, basic, username, password. Example. Okay. Ooh, good background. The problem we are experiencing is that not all columns are available in the tables. The actual incident table is missing service underscore offering and a few other columns. Is this a known issue and are anyone else experiencing the same issue? We see the service offering column when accessing the incident table through a REST API with the web browser, but not when using Azure Data Factory. Hmm. So they've already tested it through another method. Is, is it the same account and are you using the same credentials on both Azure and your test. Uh, if not, it could be ACL related. E.g., you don't your the account you're using doesn't have read access to that field. Mm, just a thought. Start with ACLs. I don't know of any mapping. It's not like SOAP where you have to get a WSDL and the WSDL says, this is what you have access to. You shall have no more, no less. Yes, WSDL really talks like that. How to calculate total availability percent of CI in service availability form? Don't know. ITBM, we're going to skip over that. Catalog, and what customizations have you done on project and project task dates? 
No responses to that yet. Catalog item visibility in catalog search. That's interesting. Should be automatic. We have created a global search for end users and homepage so that end users can just search the keyword and get the required catalog items. But as we are working on an MSP platform, we have created record producers in one catalog. Hence, end user search for a keyword. They can view all the catalog items which are not applicable for the company. Issue, in spite of adding entry in available for company table, the catalog items are visible in catalog search which are not applicable to respective company. Uh, I don't know enough about domain separation, but this sounds like a domain separation question, possibly a user criteria question. Uh, when it comes to MSPs, I usually defer to support, but I do want to learn more. So I'm going to subscribe to that question and see what happens. Let me look at my notes for today. Uh, we talked about the events, we talked about the meetups, we didn't talk about the Comcast webinar, which I believe is happening on the 19th. I'm gonna double check that. June 20th, Wednesday, Comcast accelerates, launches with the Now platform. So if you wanna hear a case study about lessons learned from implementing their workflow on the Now platform, you can go there, register for that. I'll include that link as well in the comments of the YouTube. So that's about all I had from the other side. We are coming down to about the last 10 minutes. I do need to wrap this up a little early. Thank you for joining me today. Before I forget, it's sort of like before the band plays the last song. Well, they have your attention. Let's go back to unsolved. Let's browse some unsolved things. See if we can maybe solve them or learn what other people are learning. How can we sort records in a list collector field alphabetically? That is a wonderful question. And I think I have an answer, but I want to see what other people are saying. Try adding this attribute, ref AC order by column name. Good answer. Was it right? This is for reference field, but we want it for a list collector. List collector is also a type of reference field. Can you try it once? You know what? I want to try that. I want to try it just to see what happens. Let's do, take a look at sysuser. I know I could have gone to sysuser a lot easier than typing the table name, but force of habit, I'm, if I have a table name in my head, I'll use it. Normally, the list collector on say the watch list would be sorted this way. Let's say we're going to sort it instead by something else. Take a look at the attributes available in a typical user record. We have name, we have email. Does anybody have a title <laughs> in my sample data? Let's back that off so it looks a little more intelligent. Maybe this user isn't the world's greatest example. I know, I'll make an example. I have in studio some dummy apps that I like to pick on, so I'm not always picking on, um, not always picking on incident. Yep, safety casa. I thought I had one in here. Date picker. That was my latest experiment. So I have a date picker. Let's create a. I was I was saying how you could pick dates based on a reference field. So this CLS table, if I remember right as a reference field of to the date table. Okay, so let's make a list field. Same kind of thing, only date only has one attribute, if I remember right. Date has one and only one field that we care about is date. Let's also put in a name field. There we go. That'll just be a string. Uh, the display value is going to be interesting. Huh. All right, I'm going to leave name as, I'm gonna see if that ref AC sort by or order by is the one that comes up. So let's go through, show the list from here. Always fun to do that. Uh, let's add the name field to the personalized list columns. And of course I have nothing in the name field and we'll call this this year, next year, 
<laughs> the year after. And can I retire yet? And we said I'm any good at demo data. And if we look at that in the date records, we should see just what I did before this year, next year. If I look at that in the com community live stream app, I have a reference field, which I pick. And of course, it just has the inactive dates. I have an active field on there. I mean, so it shows just the active dates. But if I add, let's do this one this time through form layout, and we'll call this field date list for lack of imagination. We'll make it a list type pointing to date. There it is. Sure, we'll put that below the split. Should look fine, right? So where I'm having too much fun. And if I pick this date list, I want some sorted. I look them up. Can you sort them in another order? So what they're saying is right now they're sorted in numerical order because that's oh, you know what? In a list field, it's it's going to I already have the answer that I need. Let's grab a screenshot of that. See the little arrow? It's going to sort in whatever order the person puts it in. Okay. The list is going to default to the order of the first column, if I remember right. After that, the user has the ability to sort on whatever column they choose, just like any other list. Here's one where I have dates sorted by date value. Once users have sorted it, get saved in their user preferences. And then anything you assume is true about the order is no longer valid because they have done an override. Ding. All right, I think we can squeeze one more in here. That was fun. That's that's half the fun of my personal developer instance is the experimentation part. Workflow changes not reflected to old records. Are the old records running a workflow? Has the workflow completed? What's the state of affairs here? I have some old changes to workflows and I publish it. I have some changes to workflow and I publish it. For the new records, these changes are reflected, but to the old records, I want to change to the work, the old records also. Please help me. Right from the docs, when a new version of existing workflow is published, the changes are not applied to running workflow context. Very important thing to note. Any currently running workflow context continues using the workflow version that was able when the workflow started. That is absolutely true. Could you elaborate how to relaunch on a new workflow version I couldn't see the option. It's not. Okay, this could get you in a whole world of hurt. You would need to stop the existing context and restart the same version to create a new context for that workflow. If you are, this could be a big mess. This can get you in a world of mess, say you already had an approval on your change request, stopping and restarting is going to reset back to the beginning. And upset 
those who already did the approval, possibly causing you compliance errors as well. Compliance audit issues as well. I really, really, did I mention really? Do not recommend doing this under any circumstances here I'm uh, doing this I'm gonna leave it there can you explain the business requirement that is driving this can you relay the explanation to those above uh, the explanation above to those who made the requirement and let them know it is a bad idea <laughs> for said reasons there a quick question do I have to define separate cab for every assignment group or could dynamically include the assignment group responsible for handling change requests and a board member into one cab Balaji, I really don't know. My specialty is around custom applications, the platform, and integrations. Um, when it comes to ITSM and CAB stuff, I have a very thin veneer of knowledge. And uh, that question goes beyond what I have. If you want to know more, I really encourage you to post that question into the community under the IT Service Management uh, Forum. And you will get some experts to at least look at it, if not answer it, hopefully answer it. I go from there. Good morning, Steve. Thank you for the transfer of funds. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Hope you enjoy your present. <laughs> uh, I am unfortunately going to have to sign off early because I have a meeting at the top of the hour. Somebody posted it at 7 a.m. my time. Bless their heart. And uh, I plan to be there. Very important. I don't believe there's a live coding happy hour today. I would have heard about something sooner, but if you're subscribed to the developer channel on YouTube, you will get that information. Uh, Tech Now episode 54 is coming up. I want to remind you that uh, that's coming up on July 10th. I'll get a registration link in this YouTube after it's done processing, but you can also go over to the community, search for the Tech Now episode list, episode 54. If you haven't gotten the email yet, you should shortly. I haven't seen it show up in my mailbox, but it will be coming out in the next few days to register for that as well. We will be covering the script debugger. Looking forward to that. Lots of developer meetups coming up. Encourage you to find one in your area. And you know what? That takes care of it for today. It feels like I only covered about three topics, but hopefully they were good. If you learned something, you like something, click that like button at the bottom of the YouTube video. Or if they have something similar on Twitch, I haven't found it yet but uh, would like to keep the others informed of what they can find and if it was helpful. Until Monday, cross the fingers, hope they're going to be here, <laughs> that I will be back on Monday. I look forward to seeing you then. Take care, learn something, share something, and I'll talk to you later.